second. There's, there's this dual zone air fryer that you have to see at midnight. It's the coolest air fryer I've ever seen in my life. It's tomorrow's special value. It starts at midnight. Okay, now, this is serious. It's awesome. It's beautiful. But there is a challenge in the world, and the challenge is the monarch butterfly. It needs to have a certain kind of food, and those kind of wild milkweeds are disappearing for lots and lots of ecological reasons that we can all debate. But the undebatable is that they're saying goodbye. So you're helping out, and you've got beauty, and you're attracting these monarch butterflies. Stephanie's back, and this is one of the items that is so close to her heart that she so believes in that you've convinced us to get these. The birds don't eat them. They're short. They're bushy. They're beautiful, and they're a perennial year after year after year. Steph, why are you so passionate about this plant? Eric, well, you did a pretty good intro, honestly, but, you know, you said it right. There is only one plant in the world that the monarch butterfly seeks out, and it is milkweed, otherwise known as Asclepius. But unfortunately, as you said, for various reasons, you know, native milkweed in the in North America has started to kind of dwindle. And as a result, the monarch butterfly population over the last two decades has dwindled down to like, you know, down 80%. Now, I will say there is a, a great little piece of news is those of us who've already started to plant milkweed, the number is starting to slowly creep up, but there is still so much we can do. Mm. And so literally by planting this, whether you have a balcony, an estate, you live just in an apartment, by planting this collection, you are literally helping save the monarch butterfly population because this is their only um, home and food plant. Get your Asclepius now. Do something yes. good, pay it forward, and have some beauty in your garden because this is a really mm -hmm. rare opportunity. Hard to find. Absolutely and easy to grow. So this is what you're physically going to be getting, right? It's a, it's a perennial. This is what yep. it will become. How tall, like we mentioned, um, sometimes milkweed can get a little wild, a little crazy. Like how did Absolutely, you yeah. pare this down and make it manageable for us? Yeah, so it's called a butterfly bouquet because this is a, a hybrid. So we've hybridized the native Asclepius that grows, you know, seven, eight foot tall. The flowers are not that pretty, but honestly, the monarch doesn't really care. But for us, this collection, it's only going to grow three to four feet tall. And as you see there, Rick, this is a four piece collection. It's not a choice of. So you're getting all four of these really gorgeous, unique colors, yellow, orange, pink, and a super hard to find white as you have with you there oh. and what I have here. So not only are you you know, going to have a feast for your eyes in the garden, <clears throat> you are truly providing a feast for the monarch butterfly. By the way, uh, our buddy Sandra, has a little video that was made. Yes. And maybe you can voice this over because this is like, you guys didn't ask her to do this. Just kind of, this just No, happen, right? she did this with her husband and her kids. And, you know, she's growing this milkweed last year with her family. They collected the caterpillars, they brought them inside, they watched. Her husband made this amazing time lapse of the butterfly emerging. And then they, they released them into the wild and let them go and do their thing. Um, but really, the only way that they could achieve to make this video was because they planted this four-piece milkweed collection, Rick, because as I was saying, and like, and like you know, um, when the monarch butterfly is d going through its migration, it's looking for one plant only, and it is this milkweed or, or Asclepius. And once the butterfly finds the plant, she's going to lay her eggs on the bottom side of the leaves, and once those eggs hatch into the caterpillars, you want to make sure and leave the caterpillars on the plant. You know, sometimes we see bugs on our plants and we get a little bit nervous, but that's the whole point is we want these caterpillars to munch on all of the foliage. And once their bellies are full, they're going to go into their chrysalis and then they're going to emerge into this gorgeous butterfly that you see here. How great is that? And they're also mm -hmm. deer resistant. Like that's yep. a good thing. So butterflies attracted, there's butterflies the created, right? but there's the caterpillar on the left. And what has mm -hmm. it become? That gorgeous, amazing uh, monarch butterfly. We have them for you at 5 z Payments. Everything's at 5 z Payments right now. Wrapping up this massive event that we have in our home and garden uh, story. And if you're shopping, if you're getting these for the first time right now, what about like different parts of the of the country? Like are they, Absolutely. for some reason I thought like maybe monarchs would be, I don't know, focus on one part of the country or a certain kind of weather or something. Is that the case no. or not? It's a great question. You know, whether you live, you know, back in your home state, way up north. For me, I live in San Diego, North Dakota. It doesn't matter where you live because this is a winter hardy perennial, which I know you know means that it can just take super winter, uh, cold winter temperatures. I um, mean, the monarch butterflies, you know, they're like flying around with like radar, like goggles, and they are looking for this one plant. So no matter where you live, 
My uncle Court likes to say whether you live in the city and you just have a small balcony or you have a massive estate here in Eastern PA, we can all do our part in planting this collection. Maybe even pick up one or two or three of them because it, truly it's kind of like your good deed. You're going to be growing beautiful flowers in your garden, but you're also providing a home and food for the monarch butterfly whose population has unfortunately dwindled pretty significantly over the last couple of decades. I ask it all the time. I'm getting these. I get it. I love it. How far away, <laughs> how far apart do I plant these? And when do these guys turn into these guys? Totally. That's an awesome question. You know, once they're full grown, the plants are going to be about three foot tall, maybe by like two to three feet wide. So give them a couple of feet um, in the garden if you're going to plant them in the ground. But they do pair wonderfully in containers like you see here, Rick. You know, this is all four colors together. That's great. Same with you. So it doesn't matter if you don't have a massive yard, if you don't have any yard, but you just have a balcony, you can still plant this milkweed. I love the container idea too. It's really pretty, really pretty. And don't, does it, don't, I'm assuming it, it, it loves sun, right? The, the butterflies love sun, it loves sun? Yes, they love the, the Asclepius, they love the sun. Asclepius. The butterflies love sun. And you know, I wanted to say, tell a short story. That caterpillar photo that we saw was actually from my home plant. I planted three of these last year. And I have to tell you, at one point I had upwards of like 50 caterpillars and they just, they went through all of my plants. I did not give them enough food. So if you're thinking like, oh, maybe I'll get one collection this year and it'll be enough. You know, I can almost guarantee you that you're gonna want, you wish that you had purchased more because by the time that you need more, you're not gonna be able to find it anywhere else. M82017. Hey, we've got an entire other hour with Roberta's wrapping up this day before we get into the 35th anniversary of Now You're Cooking on QVC in a match.